The longest chess game ever played in an official tournament as of January 2020 was Nikolic vs. Arsovic, played in Belgrade in the year 1989. The game lasted 269 moves and took 20 hours and 15 minutes to complete. The game ended up being a draw. When I first heard this, two things came to mind. First, how was this game more than five times longer than the average game? And second, which will turn out to be the theme of this video, how long is the longest possible game of chess and how would one figure this out? While we discover the answer, I will have the actual entire game running in the top right corner as sort of a challenge to finish this before the game ends. To start finding the answer, there are some important rules we must take into account. First is the 50 move rule. This rule was believed to be first introduced in 1561 by the infamous Roy Lopez in his book Libro de Ajedrez, which prevents the game from playing on indefinitely. In this rule, a pawn move or a capture must be made within 50 moves, otherwise one side can claim a draw. And if a draw can be claimed for this answer, it will be, so we must prevent this for as long as possible. Next we have the three move repetition. Simply put, if a position is repeated three times at any point, a draw can be claimed. The third rule is insufficient material. If there isn't sufficient material to checkmate on the board, then the game will end in an immediate draw. Therefore, if we end up with three pieces on the board, including the two kings, we want the third piece to be a queen or a rook, so that when it is the remaining piece, we still have a group of about 50 moves left to add. The last rule is that the kings must stay on the board. They cannot be captured unless they are being checkmated, which even then, you do not see an actual checkmate occur as the game ends if the opponent has no defensive moves to respond to a check. Because of this, the final desired position is to have only the two kings remaining on the board with the other 30 being captured. Next, we must clarify what we consider to be moves, and it may not be what you think. One move is not just white or black moving a piece, but when both of them make a move, the move number will increase by one. What do I mean by this? Every move has two tempi, requiring both a tempi move from white and black to continue. This will be very important later on when we discuss how tempis will be lost in order to find the exact answer to how long the longest possible chess game can be. Now we must talk about the value of the pieces. Since we have the 50 move rule, we need to calculate the amount of resets we have. Resets meaning getting to the 50 move limit and then making a capture or moving a pawn to reset the 50 move counter to prevent a forced draw. Because a pawn move resets the 50 move count, pawns are much more valuable than other pieces. When other pieces are captured, they offer one refresh of the 50 move rule, but pawns offer seven. They can move six times and then one more when they are captured. When we start the game, we are able to use our knights to move around, which are able to jump over the pawns at the start of the game. This means we don't have to waste any refreshes at the very start by moving pawns to allow pieces to move around. Because of this, we can calculate roughly what the longest possible chess game can be using this equation. When we look at the equation 50 times 30 plus 16 times 6, it might not make sense. So let's break it down a little bit further. 50 is for the amount of moves you can have before you have to refresh, otherwise you get a forced draw. The 30 is the amount of pieces that can be captured, which as mentioned before is every single piece except for the kings. 16 times 6, 16 being the amount of pawns on the board and 6 being the refreshes they offer when moving forward, we get the number 6300 when we add this calculation together. Okay, now we know that the maximum number is theoretically 6300, but can this be achieved? The answer is no. When we look at the pawns, we notice one issue. They can only move forward without having to capture a piece. This means that when a pawn reaches the fifth rank, it can no longer move further unless a premature pawn capture is made or a piece was captured by a pawn, wasting an entire reset of the 50 move rule. What we can do is move all of the other pieces out of the way, but here we're still stuck at a crossroads and have to decide how we can maximize our move count 
and minimize the amount of refreshes that we have to give up. We can actually do this by wasting eight refreshes. Instead of moving the pawns and then capturing them, we can have the pawns capture on their first move, which will move them onto other files. This is important because now we can have four pawns on each side capture a piece, each wasting time by using up one refresh, but allowing the pawns to now reach the other side of the board. Here, when we waste eight refreshes of the 50 move counter, we need to update the calculation as such. Adding minus eight times 50 to our calculations means we are taking away 400 moves from our previous answer of 6,300, and that we now have the highest possible number at 5,900. We are very close to the answer now, but we still have one more thing to look at that changes this number ever so slightly. In order to fix this number one last time, we must look further at the 50 move rule. As mentioned before, the 50 move rule is made up of 50 moves, and each move is made up of two tempi, one move from white and one move from black. Therefore, we know that the 50 move rule is made up of 100 tempi. When the 100th tempi is passed, the game will be drawn. Why is this important? Because when we are on the 99th tempi, we know it is white's turn to move, and if they make a reset, we lose one tempi. That would have added to the total move count. And now we know that the longest practical game is currently calculated at 5,900 moves. We need to make sure we limit the amount of tempi lost as much as possible. First, we know that black can't simply promote all their pieces and then capture all of white's and then have white capture all of black's pieces because white never had the chance to push any of their pawns. So now we know that at least one tempi will be used up when white does start to capture all of black's pieces. We also need the desired structure as mentioned before with all of white's pawns on every other file and blacks on the opposite so they can pass through each other. To achieve this, white starts by giving up both of their knights to fix two out of the four pawns for black. Unfortunately, white will have no more pieces to sacrifice and if white moves a pawn to sacrifice more pieces, then a tempi would be lost. So here, instead, black will now sacrifice four available pieces and fix white's structure to be able to pass through blacks. The second tempi loss will be on move 349. When black has given their four pieces for white to get the desired structure as shown now, black will then capture two of white's pieces to complete the needed structure to carry out the rest of the game. In this stage, black can capture all of white's pieces except for the pawns, though this is not 100% necessary because there will be one more opportunity to do so. Black will now proceed to promote all of their pawns while also making sure not to checkmate white. The stage at which the third tempi will be lost may be different for others, depending on how many of white's pieces they decided to capture. Here in this game I played out, I left only one rook and the switch for this was on move 2749, when all of black's pieces had promoted, as now it is time for white to promote all of their pawns and capture all of black's pieces. In this stage, it is important for white to capture all of black's pieces and also promote all of their own pawns, as any more switches would needlessly shorten the game, which is something we do not want to do. Of course, when white starts capturing, we lose our fourth tempi here. The fourth and final tempi we lose is when black will now finally return the favor and capture all of white's pieces, completing the cycle and finishing the game. In total, we lost four tempi, which takes away two moves from the total 5,900. This means the answer we are left with when we ask what the longest possible game of chess is, totals at 5,898 moves. And that concludes not only the answer to this question, but my entire series of bringing a light to the mesmerizing game that is chess. If you would like to see all three of these videos in their entirety, check out my playlist titled Understanding Chess. As always, my name is Brayden, and I'll see you in my next series.